Celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk, it's the In Wheel Time Car Show. Just ahead, we check in with Paul Wapple with the Alamo Area Corvette Club. Mr. Mars reviews the 2021 VW Atlas. We check with our weekly events calendar, and we'll have the stories making auto news headlines this week. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show for Saturday, April 10th, 2021. Ooh. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. King Conrad DeLong and Jeffrey Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this uh, Saturday for our live broadcast. If you're listening on a podcast afterwards, well, welcome to you as well. All right, uh, time now to uh, talk to, uh, well, a friend of uh, the show. His name is Paul Wapple, and he is with the Alamo Area Corvette Club. And we're not going to be able to see, for those of you that uh, actually watch the video portion of the show, we're not going to be able to see Paul, but we'll be able to hear Paul. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hey, good morning. Well, it's good. How y'all doing? Very well, thank you. It's good to be with you this morning. And uh, the Alamo Area Corvette Club. Well, you know what? I've been kind of looking for a a a, a road trip, and I'm thinking, well, where are you? Uh, we're located in San Antonio. You're in San Antonio. Well, I think that I read somewhere about Bernie. Uh, so we have events that happen on Bernie, yes. Yeah, well, that, I, that's what it kind of, I'm kind of alluding to the fact that you guys have an event coming up in Bernie, do you not? No, that that is actually being put on by the Texas Corvette Association. They're uh, another club in San Antonio, which I'm also a member of. Okay. Okay, well, I, I guess it's either on your website or Facebook yeah, or something. I'm not, and, not sure where I got that from then. Yeah, so all right. Bernie is the no, home it's, of... It's on, our, it's, on our, it's on our website. We support their uh, club, and they support our club. Oh, so nice. it's a okay. mutual thing. Okay. So uh, what do you got going this weekend? Besides uh, talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing this weekend. Uh, we're looking forward to the uh, car show in Bernie. That that right now they got 270 plus uh, cars registered. They're probably going to get up to about 400 cars in downtown Bernie. So that'll oh, wow. be a lot of cars out there. That that'll be a ton of cars in Bernie. That that be a cool yeah. show. And is it, it? It's open to all brands. It's open to all brands, but usually they bring in about uh, what's a 250, 300 Corvettes so that makes up the show right there. We'll have to see if Don Wetzel's bringing his uh, uh, his uh, 35 Chevy to the show. A friend of mine lives out in San Antonio. You'd enjoy it. It's beautiful downtown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We did uh, a couple of years ago. I did the uh, uh, veterans show up in Bastrop, and that was that was well worth the trip. Uh, and another big show that's supported by all the locals. Um, so. When you say you support the other club's activity, will you guys be there as a as your club helping them facilitate the show, or just support uh, so, by going? Yeah, so yeah, so our club will be uh, cruising, and we'll probably bring in about twenty of our own Corvettes to the to the event, uh, and then uh, we'll, we normally help where you know they, wherever they need help at, you know, parking people and stuff like that. I mean, it's a it's a mutual. Uh, a relationship with them. Well, what kind of event is it? I mean, is it going to be a car show show? A judge show? Yeah, it's a car show. Yeah, it's a car, yeah, it's a car show show. Yeah, you'll have all varieties of cars there. Okay. They fill up the entire downtown part of uh, Bernie. Wow. So is it is it uh, a one-day event or is it a weekend event? So it's a, the car show's for one day, and then on the following day they do a Hill Country Cruise. Whoever signs up for it, they can actually go do well, the I wanna, Swiss nice. Swiss I, I, I want to do that. Are you, gonna send, are you going to send me an invitation? He just did. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well, I'll be looking for it in the snail mail. <laughs> you got it. Donald, Donald so be there in his, in his 2001. I'm sorry, say again? So there's another event you might be interested in. There's one called Corvette Invasion that happens in Bastrop. I don't know if you all have ever heard of that one. No. You're, that's why we have you so, here, to tell us all about that. So Corvette Invasion is going to happen the 16th through the 18th of July. Uh, it used to originate out at uh, Circuit of Americas. Um, but uh, the city of Bastrop actually called them up and said, hey, would you mind putting your event downtown in Bastrop? So they... Two years ago, they moved it out there, and it's a uh, uh, you know how pretty, pretty it is out there. So uh, they've been doing it out there the last two years. Uh, last year they had to cancel it, but uh, it's a it's a great venue. And then on Sunday they actually let the Corvettes go off the Circuit of Americas and do uh, parade laps on the on the track. What at 150 miles an hour? Or how does that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attest to that. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. See, he's my kind of guy. 
Well, it's it's a short right. ride from Bastrop to Coda. You know, when, uh, you know, it's it's always, and Bastrop really welcomes as a city, they welcome automotive events, which is kind of cool that the, the downtown area says, hey, bring your show to us, and uh, you can basically absorb all of downtown with all of your show cars. Well, you know, since they put that, by, well, we would call it a bypass, an elevated freeway uh, out there through Bastrop, now you don't have to stop at Bastrop, although I will say there is a Bucky's there That's that right. I Why always you come into town. I always pull off and go to the Bucky's and then get back on the road. So I always stop there and support everybody in Bastrop and, by shopping at Bucky's. Yeah, and there's a lot of other nice shops, too, you can buy things. Yeah, you know, there's, the, the, there's good food in Bastrop. The, the, well. the independently owned family shops; those are cool to look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that that sounds like tons of fun. So, how do how do we get uh, registered and and on the on the bucket list, as it were, for the Corvette? Uh, so invasion. the website Cor- CorvetteInvasion dot com, and it'll give you all the details for that. Okay. And what about uh, what about the Alamo area Corvette Club? I've, if you got stuff posted on there, I'm good with that. So we just did our, our show, our uh, show for Triple H uh, Equitherapy uh, in March. We had 128 cars show up for that event. That was our first time doing it. And we raised money for uh, this facility that uh, uses horses to treat people with uh, PTSD and disabilities because they found out horses are kind of like dogs. When people get close to them, they, they you know it calms the nerves and they really get used to being around them. So we supported that charity. And then in the fall, we do a toy drive for the Fisher House. And if you're not familiar with the Fisher House, the Fisher House uh, supports military families uh, that have uh, loved ones that are in the hospital being treated. So a lot of times the families have to pick up their bags, travel to the base where the, the military f- a member is being treated. And a lot of times the kids are, are pulled along with them. You know, when they arrive there, they don't have toys or anything like that. So we, uh, we gather up a bunch of toys and drop them off to the Fisher Houses, which are located on the military bases here in San Antonio. And that way, when the kids arrive, they have toys to play with while the family is uh, looking after the loved ones. Yeah, very nice. Well, you know, most Corvette clubs that I'm familiar with always have charities that they support and uh, do quite a good job at it. And obviously, yours is one of them. Um, you know, we've got several Corvette clubs here in the Houston area, and um, I haven't really reached out to any of the Corvette clubs here locally. I used to be uh, a member of the San Jacinto Corvette Club, one of the oldest in Texas, and maybe the original one in Texas. And then... Uh, moved from there to start our own called Corvettes of Houston, which, uh, oddly enough, there was a a car dealership called Corvettes of Houston, and uh, I think they've changed the name of it since then, but whatever the case may be. So I was a member uh, for a couple of years, and I really would love to get back into the club thing. Uh, You know, so many of the club events take place on Saturday, and it's difficult for me to do Saturdays since I'm doing the car show. I don't want the car show to go away, so uh, I have to bypass the Saturday events, unless we're obviously there at the event. But uh, Sundays are good days for me, and I I love road trips, and uh, you know, San Antonio is a nice road trip for a Saturday afternoon to drive there, meet up with everybody, uh, have uh, some beverages on Saturday night, and then get up on Sunday and, and do a fun run or a uh, well, show or whatever. What a beautiful couple of weekends right now to go out and take some of these uh, hill country cruises because it's blue bonnet season. It's a, it's a gorgeous ride. We can actually get another picture of you out in the blue bonnet field. Sure, exactly. <laughs> Laying down in the blue bonnets this time. I don't gonna, think they're gonna blooming. Have clothes on this time? No, stop. No. What? What'd you uh, say? I, I, I don't think it, the blue it, bonnets are blooming right now. Yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah absolutely yeah. they are. Uh, obviously, Jeff doesn't get out very no, much. No, I don't. Yeah, we, we know. So, Paul, um, do you ever do anything here in the Houston? Do you all ever get together and come to the Houston area? Uh, we uh, we used to go down there. I'm trying to remember the event that was down there by the, the NASA area. Um, there was a, car sh- a Corvette event down there that we'd gone to a couple of times. But lately, we've uh, we spent more time in West Texas. There's an event that happens in October called uh, Big Ben Octane Fest. And we started it about four years ago. And it's out uh, the uh, Big Ben, Terra Lingua, Marfa area. Uh, it's where Carl Shelby used to test drive all his GT350s back in the day. So um, you guys so invaded with there. Corvettes, huh? Say again? So you invade that area with Corvettes. 
Absolutely, yeah. We we invaded with Corvettes, and we we hooked up with some Mustangs, and then some Vipers piled on, and now we got some Ferraris, and now we have some Ford GTs. Because uh, I I didn't realize how scenic West Texas was until we went out there. Because uh, Fort Davis, uh, McDonald's Observatory is out there, which is the darkest part of the United States, which I didn't know. And then there's roads that just go miles and miles of straightness, and it's just beautiful scenery out there. So we do that once a year out there. And when is that? October. It's the uh, yeah, October eighth uh, or the eleventh. Wow. Well, that that you know, that's one of those kind of an events that you would make a stop in San Antonio on a set and, and hook up with you in, with you guys, and then whenever it is that you leave from San Antonio to go out to West Texas. See, I'm always thinking ahead. That's that. Yeah. That's my kind of but stuff. That is a that's a beautiful part of the country yeah. out there. It really is. It, yeah. it is. It's very beautiful. Yeah, and the weather is perfect. We wake up in the morning. Uh, the weather's typically around 40 degrees. Sure. And then uh, the, the cars love the cold air. And then by the time we get done around one or two, you know, you you've, you're done driving. You sit back and you relax for a while. And you know. Sounds it's like my good. kind of event. Long, See? long, straight roads yes. that are pretty unoccupied and and possibly yep. uh, kind of blocked off a little bit. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't Thank think you. they're blocked off. Well, but there, there's the, a couple. The, of, the word gets out. Yeah, yeah. But there leave is a, them alone. There is a couple of road races out there that they do block the highways off. Right. And uh, yeah, that's the big band open road race. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I'm I'm at a point in my life where I don't really need to do. Uh, I don't need to press the limits of the C5 Corvette. So I'm okay with that. I know that it'll do whatever it'll do. But um, just knowing that. Is comfort enough? I don't mind, you know, getting it up to a hundred, but that's about all she wrote for me these days. So there's a there's a there's a part of the route that we take. It's called River Road. It parallels the Rio Grande. So you're actually looking over to the left and seeing uh, Mexico. You know, I think I, so I I'm sorry, Paul, but I think at, at this point I I would kind of avoid that area <laughs> right now. <laughs> might have to dodge a lot of civilian traffic. <laughs> Yeah, running because across the freeway. Traffic. Yeah, running across the roadway. Yeah, believe it or not, because the borders, uh, the Mexico side of Big Bend is not that bad, but the roads are fantastic to drive. I mean, uh, I, I can't explain how, how nice it is to drive down through there. Is that is that partially the roads are so well uh, maintained because it's within the state park? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. A lot of tourists out that area, so yeah. Mm. Well, you know, one of the things that we didn't ask you, what kind of Corvette do you have, Paul? I have a 2017 Grand Sport. Okay. Well, of course you do. I wouldn't expect <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you do you have any uh, Corvette race cars uh, that are on the street right now? Not you personally, but know. in your club. Um, so we have one guy that races a, a, a C4, a vintage C4, and he races in what they call the uh, Sports Car Vintage Racing Association. Uh, every November uh, at Coda, they race out there for the Grand Championship. But uh, he's the only guy in our club that actually has a purebred uh, race, uh, car. race car. Yeah. And everybody else are casual people like you and me that uh, just enjoy our enjoy cars. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yep. Mm-hmm. Well, Corvette customers are passionate folks. You know, they. Uh, uh, when I was assigned to the Bowling Green assembly plant for... 10 years um they were they were passionate enough to let us know when at general motors what they didn't like about them (laughs) really oh yeah yeah there was you know there's there's all kinds of different stories of uh customers calling uh, bowling green and giving them their opinion of uh of what things they would like to see in the future and what things they don't want to see any more of so general motors actually listen to that well the people at the bowling green assembly plant do for sure you know they they actively had a you know they've got you know people that'll answer the phone and talk to the corvette customers there's pretty paul have you ever been to the bowling green assembly plant I have. I was up there. We uh, They did what they call the Corvette Caravan, which uh, they did the 25th anniversary of the Corvette two years ago. So a bunch of the Corvettes, especially from uh, Houston, we met up with them in um, up by Arkansas border. And uh, probably, I would say, about 2,000 Corvettes convened on the Corvette Museum for that. It's and, pretty nice. And the museum and the assembly plant are pretty much work hand in hand in, in what they're doing. Was Did you take yours as a museum delivery? Your uh, 2017? Not, no, uh, no, but I, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but they put in a brand new racetrack right across the highway there that uh, the Corvette Museum owns, and you could actually test drive your uh, Corvette through there. 
Really? Hmm. When you go pick it yeah. up? When you go pick it yep. up, well, what about somebody that has a C5? Would I be able to, uh, you know, I turned that off. Yeah. Uh, would, I be able, yep. would I be able to take my C5 over there to that racetrack? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We did track time out there, and uh, there were C5, C4s, uh, a couple of C1s, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, you get to take it up there. Uh, part of it is designed after the uh, Virginia International Raceway. So when you drive through it, you got the bridge overhead and uh, tunnel below. So it's a pretty nice drive. How fun! Yep. Well, they're they're they they are car enthusiasts and very much Corvette enthusiasts all throughout Bowling Green. You know the the fun thing is you know when you see a lot of these spy shots of future Corvettes, generally it's a caravan of of pilot cars that are going out of Bowling Green on test drives, uh, out uh, out uh, west of Bowling Gr Bowling Green, and then coming back where they get a lot of those photographs. I had a chance to go on a couple of those drives, and uh, that's always fun. We did the uh, the original Z06 drive in 2002, so. All right, so what, what is the uh, next thing? Besides a Corvette club meeting that I absolutely abhor any of those. <laughs> <laughs> there, there went your invitation. Well, well, well they don't like you showing up either, Don. <laughs> well, you know, it's I, a I, you know I, the, the meeting part of clubs is like, can't they just the officers go do that? Because I don't care about all that. You just make the rules. I'll live by the rules. I don't want to get involved in all of that. They're going to make you read the minutes. I ain't going to read no damn minutes. I can tell you that. <clears throat> so, uh, Paul, uh, what's the next thing you guys got coming up? Um, so The in, invasion? Uh, no. Believe it or not, I won't make invasion. Um, the Black Hills, South Dakota put, uh, Corvette Club put together a uh, car uh, caravan from uh, the east coast of South Dakota to the west coast. And so we're hooking up with them um, mid-July, right before uh, Corvette invasion. So we're actually going to stop in Lawson, Oklahoma, for a Corvette club up there that's putting on a car show. And then we're going up to uh, South Dakota, going from Grand, I think it's Grand Forks, which is on the East Coast. And we're going all the way to Spearfish on the left side of the side. So are you just in independently there, wealthy, Paul, and you can take all this time off from work? Are you retired, or how does that work? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm, re I'm retired, enjoying life, so, yeah, life's good. Sounds okay. like it. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Well, we want to be you. Yeah. Uh, that's the way that that works. I mean, you know, all this time off, I would love to take all that time off, but yeah, just not quite ready to do that Plus, yet. he lives in San Antonio. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. Smack dab in the middle yeah. of the state, but he's going to Wyoming. Well, that's right. I'm thinking of the food. Yeah, the food? Yeah. Yeah. Tacos. Oh, yeah. Well, there's tacos everywhere anymore. Yeah, but, but, I, but in Wyoming, you can get elk and bison tacos. I want the sausage on a stick. There you go. Bison on a stick. <laughs> bison on a stick. Well, Paul, it's great to talk to you, and we really appreciate the time you've taken this morning to talk to us about the Alamo Area Corvette Club. And we've posted links to both Corvette Invasion and Octane Fest on our Facebook page as well. So if people are that are I listening, appreciate are it. and uh, you interested. guys are welcome to San Antonio if you're ever in the area. Just you got my number, give me a call, and uh, be glad to host you. We really, we really do appreciate it. Well, hopefully, we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, guys. Have Thank a good uh, day. You, you do the same, Paul Wapple. Alamo Area Corvette Club. Man, Sounds like, like I, I'd like to do that thing in October. They are. Active. You don't have a Corvette. Well, we'll take yours. You and you and you Mars can go out car. as a couple. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can finish each other's no, sentences. I don't even away. have my own oh, car. I haven't had my own car in a month. Well, at least it's not sitting out there underneath the tarp it's, and it's Susie's actually, sleeping on top of it's it. It's actually getting chilly out to get the front blew through earlier. Is that what yeah, it was? Misty and misty. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Weatherman. There you go. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Time now for the events calendar. So uh, event-wise, uh, tomorrow the uh, Driver City uh, uh, is having a meet at the— Driver's City? Yep, at uh, the Meineke uh, in, on 529. Nifty Fifties is tonight. The Kima Car Show and meet is tonight. Uh, also— um, Do you know the Muffler Man? Do you— do you know the Muffler Man? Is Do that, you is know that the no. Muffler Man, the Muffler Man, yeah. the Muffler Man? Do you know the Muffler Man? Mike Temple is his name. I'm not going to go there at all. There's, there's, there's got to be something to the that end. I don't want to know. Um, 
And then again, the seventh annual Demolition Derby is going to be at the Waller County Fairgrounds next weekend. Uh, tomorrow is, uh, excuse me, the Lone Star Rod and Custom Show is in Austin. They're still having that, aren't they? I think it's still on, yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, it's out there off this, Decker Lane. Why wouldn't, the, why wouldn't it be oh, on? Because of COVID. Count, you know, it's Austin. It's Austin, Austin thinks on. it's San Francisco. Uh, well, it is pretty much. Yeah, and then uh, also uh, on the 17th, the Camaro Car Show at the Kima Boardwalk. On the 18th is the Low Life First Annual Car and Drift Show. Low Life? Low Life at Speed Sports Racing Park. Uh, and then on Sunday, the 25th, is the 24th annual Tomball Lions Club car, uh, car show uh, at Tomball High School. They need to put ointment and on then, San Francisco. And then, <laughs> and then on May 1st <laughs> is uh, Keels and Wheels 25th anniversary concourse, De Elegance. De Elegance. And, and we will be there. I think it's Concours. Come out and join us. Concours De Elegance. Concours De Elegance. Yeah, there's no hard ass at the end, though. No. Hard ass? No hard hard ass. ass. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, speak you, with accents when you go you out there. Can't. <laughs> we. We. Time now for this hour's it's car French. review. We. <laughs> please, please. Uh, Mr. Mars had a chance to drive the 2021 VW Atlas. Ta da. This is, um, this is one of those surprising vehicles to me. Uh, this is the second time I've had a chance to drive it. And this was the premium R Line edition. So that's the trim level. Now, we're talking about a midsize CUV SUV from Volkswagen that really feels a lot bigger than what uh, you would think a midsize is. Now, the one we had, obviously, with the premium, we had the four motion, which is their version of an all-wheel drive setup. Uh, we're talking about three-row seating. Uh, you can get it with seven or, or six passengers, depending on if you have the second row bucket seats. Ooh. But there's eight different trim levels of this vehicle. And what's really cool, this vehicle, when Volkswagen decided to do that, do this, they designed it for the North America market specifically. And it's built in Tennessee. So there's a lot of things that, that we as Americans, consumers, like, like 17 cup holders, that a lot of places in the world, they don't <laughs> do that. So... It, it, it's uh, it's it, it, like I said, it was very surprising. Now we had it in a racing green exterior color. It used to be a fairly popular color, but they put a metallic flavor onto it. It's beautiful out in the sunlight. It really is. How does it taste? And um, it, we had the complete LED lighting package because this is a uh, kind of like a an upgrade this year for it. So we got a new front and rear styling and. Uh, so for example, the grill goes all the way across between the headlights, touches headlight to headlight for this year. But the uh, the new styling mm -hmm. on and it, it integrates the LED. Yeah, it looks yeah, good. The grill it kind of puts it all stuff, together. Yeah. But because of the, the new styling on the front and the rear of the vehicle, it actually added three inches overall length to the vehicle without extending the wheelbase, which that's part of what makes it feel like it's much bigger. So we got a complete LED lighting package that's got the automatic uh, front headlights, but it's also got the cornering lights on it, which is a new feature. Uh, a lot of people are going to that, and I really like that. We had the heated, heated power side mirrors, and uh, the passenger side mirror has an automatic tilt. You put it in reverse, and it automatically tilts down for you. That's Not cool. the driver's side. The driver's side bugs me because I, I, it messes up my vision, but the passenger side, that's real convenient. Since it, we had the R-Line package, so it's got different badging and different trim levels to go with so it. So that's their performance version. It is. But it's not really in into the engine, so it's, it's more of a trim package. So it's got the 21-inch aluminum wheels on it that are optional because of that. And you go into the interior of it, and you're going to find that we had the brown and black leather seating surfaces that I couldn't. And uh, it is a three-row vehicle. The front seats are heated, What were you going to say about the brown and black seating surfaces? I said it's very attractive, particularly in the with the green trim. I agree. And uh, so the second row, the outboard seating on it is also heated, but... They also slide forward to getting out of it. Right here's a good shot of it where it kind of tilts forward. And supposedly, if you've got a baby seat strapped in it, you can still do the same thing to give you access to the third row. Now, uh, which is a 50-50 fold flat type of seat. So you and Becky have an announcement to make? No. Okay. <laughs> now, if you uh, up front, you're going to see that, it, that in the dash, it's got the 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system in it. And it worked really well. Uh, most of the things you can find, there's a couple of things kind of buried down into the software, that, but, you know, it was easy to get to once you could do it. And if you look through the back of it, it's got 21 cubic feet of storage behind the third row. But if you fold everything down, you can get it out to 96.8, and you can put a lot of stuff back there. A drum set. A drum set, 
a sleeping bag. I think you could actually put some sleeping bags in there. So it's it's it really feels a lot bigger than what you would think of a midsize. Now to power all this, you get up under the hood. It's got a 3.6 liter V6 in it, 276 horsepower, 266 pound feet, backed by an eight-speed transmission. It's not the most powerful, but it's got plenty of power for this vehicle. It'll drive at any speed you want. Probably speeds you shouldn't be driving at out on the interstate anyway. Hmm. Now, properly equipped, there's a little bit of a tow package. It will tow 5,000 pounds with it. Now, the EPA says in the city you should be looking for about 16, howled on the highway 22, combined at 18. You can get the 22 out on the highway. My combined for the week, though, uh, wasn't quite that. And of course so not. we had. Uh, Who was it? But Five? one of the things I really liked about it. <laughs> was the smooth acceleration of it. I mean, it was it's not a race car, like I said, because it doesn't have the most power, but it's got more than adequate. It was a very nice driving vehicle. My wife even liked it. The other thing I really liked about it, on the interior, it's got a rather high seating. Do you seating. still see your wife? Once in a while. Okay. So it's got real high seating, so the driver's got a great view without all the glass and stuff. And 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 it's got a so it's got a very controlled driver feeling like you're in control, but not floaty drive down the highway. Now, if you're looking for something to compare it to, you might look at a Ford Explorer that starts at about 32.6, can easily get up to the 54 plus. A Honda Pilot starts at 32.550 and easily bumps the 50,000. Chevy Traverse has got one. It's a little bit on the lower side, 29,008 starting point, but it also will get up to 51,000. So you can get a base Atlas for $31,545. That's getting that's the entry. But our vehicle with a premium, the test. MSRP on it was fifty thousand nine hundred ninety-five. The MSRP is tested because we had a couple of little small uh, options to go in there, but mainly it was uh, they weren't small. The suggested retail price was fifty-one thousand. But that's the thing. But that's it's still a, really it, it's in the packages. sweet spot. By the that. time you get to the premium with the all-wheel drive, there's really no options for it. I mean, this is basically back to that uh, mysterious delivery thing. Uh, delivery destination charges. Yeah. So that puts it at fifty-one-seven, which is competitive with the other vehicles mm -hmm. in the same segment. But it's really not optioned because you just, that's the package. You get, get to the premium with that. That's what you get. Get these away from me. Uh, please. <laughs> yeah, we're listening, <laughs> we're, keeping you we're off listening to you. Yeah, listen. Your <laughs> num, 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 num. Wait a minute. So wait anyway, minute. that Hold was on. my review of the Atlas. So Jeff brought, Jeff the brought in beans. a mixed bag of jelly beans. And I've discovered this because some of them taste like soap. And they're all different kinds of sizes. And I start looking at them. Some of them are labeled Starburst. Yeah. Other ones. There's some, some, something from the 7-Eleven, I think. Some are labeled so, Dove. So on Don's desk that you can't see are all of the licorice-flavored yeah. ones. I, I do like those. He's, here. he's pulling those out. Don't send them over here. Put them over here. Where, there, there's, a, there's a couple of them that taste like soap. Joy <laughs> Joy and Dove. Those are the brands. That, right. Joy and Dove. <laughs> yeah. It's so, the dawn of a new age. Oh, there you so, go. So to speak. They taste like soap, or they taste like no, not all ointment. of them. Ointment. <laughs> <laughs> they taste like ointment. Yeah. You woke Sue's up. <laughs> Poor Sue's. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Amazon, and Podcast Addict. Among others, we need to we need to list all of them just to see. No, if you, you know, I think well, I think I think what I'm going to do is going to say your favorite podcast channel. And save us a minute every show. Pretty much. You'd still be late, <laughs> as we always are. The In Real Time Show continues right after this quick break. The Tailpipes and Tacos Monthly Cruise-In has become so popular, you'll be able to attend at more locations. Enjoy fabulous Houston car culture at any of the four participating Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex restaurants. Tailpipes and Tacos will be held in Tomball at Highway 249 near 2978, Bay Area Boulevard near the Gulf Freeway in Webster, the Grand Parkway just south of I-10 and Katy, and the Kirby location off the Southwest Freeway. Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and awesome cars. Mark your calendar for Saturday, April 17th for the next Tailpipe and Tacos at one of the four participating Loopy Tortilla Mexican restaurants, 8 to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. See collector cars, hot rods, customs, originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in this friends and family event. Start your Saturday off right at Houston's hottest cruise in. Tailpipes and Tacos, April 17th, 8 to 11 a.m. Participating Loopies are located in Tomball, Katy, West University, and Clear Lake. April 17th, in real time, we'll be broadcasting from the West University location on the Southwest Freeway. Weather permitting. Is your 
business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? Well, you found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com.